Last time on Dragon Ball Z, things went into overtime as Bobby revealed he knew the location of a certain Capsule Corporation heir by way of a mole in the operation and intended to pay the estate a visit so they could pay proper respects to the birthday boy. After Bulma reminded everyone that the end of the Dragon Radar means the end of the Dragon Balls and any hopes they have of unscrewing the Earth's current circumstances, Goku sent Trunks on a mission to Mom Paul's to grab the device while he introduced himself to the salmon tinged Titan firsthand. Knowing that words would have little impact here, Goku provided a first-hand lesson in Super Saiyan biology and ended it with a test, hitting Super Saiyan 3 and giving Boo the cram session of a lifetime. Genuinely impressed at Boo's innate fighting prowess, after only a short bit of play, Goku rejoined the black community after sensing Trunks make his way back to the lookout. The exhausted Saiyan left Boo with two pieces of wisdom. One, the mouthy mole rat he let run the show could probably do with a lesson in manners, and two, in just a couple days time a warrior strong enough to give him the party he was looking for would make himself known. So if he could manage to hold off on the human extinction project for just a few more hours, his weight would be worth it. Boo took both of those things to heart, giving Bobby a lesson in respect fist first before learning of the discerning palate of Earth women, while Piccolo and Goku learned that he had even less time than once thought, making the race to learn fusion all the more dire. On the planet of the Kais, while Boo was out clubbing and chasing skirts, Gohan was studying the blade. Whilst you were out partying, I studied the blade. With his progress in learning to handle the sheer heft of the Z-Sword coming along at an alarming rate, enough to make even his number one hater commend his progress. Like an online sweat queuing up for rank, Gohan had finally realized it was time to lock in. Even in death, his pops continued to break records and put the entirety of the earth on his back, so maybe it was time he showed the same resolve and proved exactly why he was worth the 10 plus episodes of Slice of Life goodness at the beginning of the arc. Back at base, Trunks had finally returned with the radar and training for fusion could properly begin. No one was more surprised than Goku as he peeped the staunch obedience of the Saiyan boys who now stood in front of him, a power pole's distance from the prepubescent sassy smartasses that were testing his manhood while he talked moments before. Yeah, Goku, looks like Majin Buu wasn't the only one that got straightened out from that Super Saiyan 3 flex. Huh, maybe you're right, Piccolo. See, told you old man's got hands, Goten. Now hear me out, boys, because I may only be able to go over this once. Whew, my apologies for breathing like Yajirobe going up a flight of steps. That form really takes it out of you. Now watch close, because I see the way you guys learn to hit those TikTok routines, so there's no reason you can't get this right. Alright, so your hands start off here below your waist, right? And then you move both of them out to the side, fingers fully extended like a maniac. Then you put both arms to the side like you're about to hit a cabbage patch while, and this is important fellas, you make sure only your tiptoes are touching the floor on your XG timing. Don't try to act embarrassed, Shunks, we all know you mess with K-pop, it's not a secret. Then after three steps, you ball both hands into a fist, getting sturdy as possible before linking your index fingers with your partner and becoming the strongest badasses this planet has ever seen. Pretty cool, right? Crickets. Big Green, normally outstanding for his ability to maintain composure in the face of adversity, had even found himself at a complete loss of words. The earth was cooked. Trunks was the first to break the silence. Alright Goten's dad, I'm just gonna say it. That might be the zestiest thing I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen Gohan practicing his Saiyan man dance in the mirror when he thought me and Goten left the house. Zesty? Is that what you guys say when something's cool now? Well, I think you're zesty too, Trunks. But more importantly, I need to know that you guys got all that down. You and your partner have to be completely symmetrical or this thing isn't gonna work. Uh, symmetrical? Is that the game my grandma plays where they talk weird and she's always lighting her kitchen on fire? Kitchen on Trunks, that's the Sims. Piccolo, come over here, please. It looks like we're gonna have to give the boys a demonstration firsthand before I catch my ride out of here. Goku, I will kill everyone on this lookout and then myself before I let these boys see me do what you just did. No offense. Piccolo, we don't have time. If you don't help me show the boys how to do this right now, I'm leaving and the only chance to take Boo out is getting in that Uber with me. Having never felt farther away from his title of Demon King than today, my junior swallowed what was left of his pride and demonstrated the fusion ritual to the boys right along with Goku. After completing the dance and mourning the loss of something unnameable, but he knows he'll never get it back, Piccolo raised the question to Goku. So, uh, you said you planned on using this technique with Vegeta, right? Yeah, Piccolo, what's the problem? You do realize that you have a better shot of getting Vegeta to acknowledge his widow's peak than ever, and I mean ever, doing that technique with you. Just keeping it honest. What are you talking about, Kamikolo? You act like it's embarrassing or something. Never took you as a shy type. As Big Green ruminated on the fact that he had just become a big joke, Majin Buu decided that after a big day of harassing women, he needed a big nap. So this fella gathered up all the regular ass humans in the vicinity and in a sort of reverse spirit bomb type situation held his hands up high and turned the entire population into Play-Doh. Then Buddy used that quintuple X lung capacity to clear the land and turned that cursed ball of human lives into the house that Buu built. 
then this fella had the nerve to go about his business like he wasn't the biggest terrorist threat on earth, sitting at his little dining room table for meal time, jumping in the bubble bath, dropping the deuce, and speaking of which, the editors of the TV version of the scene were on one, because why did these goons feel the need to have Boo the moment he was feeling the bubble guts squeeze one out, then they edited that nonsense to appear like the toothpaste Buddy was using in the following frame. Sick work, but I can't lie, I definitely laughed when I peeped it. After Boo took care of his hygiene, this dude took a five second nap maximum before hopping out of his chair like, yup, time to kill people again. Bro, if Majin Buu wasn't a pink fellow with the waist size of Peter Griffin, this whole arc would be too dark to even comprehend. Guy is for real a menace. As time appeared to be running shorter for the living creatures in Buu's area code, so too did Son Goku find his own time at its limit as well. While homie was in the middle of giving Trunks and Goten their private hip-hop choreography lessons, Baba found her way to the wayward hero, informing him that his good boy pass was finally up. Oh, gotta go. Looks like it's on you from here on out, Piccolo. Don't go being all shy on me either. Make sure you teach these boys how to bust it wide open so they can do the same to Majin Buu's head. Goku then approaches battered wife, emotionally drained, looking like a military wife preparing for her man's seventh deployment. Oh, don't cry, babe. I know we didn't get to have our sneaky link this time, but at least you don't have to buy a bigger table for dinner. No, you absolute idiot. Not only am I losing you, but they lost Gohan, and now you're putting the fate of the world in the hands of our youngest? Did you not learn anything from the past seven years? Ah, you worry too much, honey. Trunks and Goten got this. If they can learn a two-step like I did to get you in bed for our honeymoon, the earth and their lives are as good as safe. Oh, and Fidel, I'm begging you, please don't send a Dear John letter to Gohan in the afterlife. He's a sensitive kid, and he'll be coming back soon, so you'll have to wait only a little bit. Goku, first of all, you're gross. And besides, I truly believe Gohan's alive. I can't explain it, but ever since he put down some of that Super Saiyan... Never mind, let's just call it woman's intuition. Krill chimed in. You know, I appreciate you believing a little buddy so much. By the way, I'm the one that taught him everything he knows if you catch my drift, but we haven't found a trace of Gohan's energy since he ran into Majin Buu. I'm pretty sure that kid is deader than Yamcha's DMs on a Friday. As Goku scanned the lookout, peeping Yamcha delivering a slick middle finger to Krillin out of the corner of his eye, he looked down to see Goten looking up nervously. What, you want to scrap or something before I go? No, you idiot. He wants to give his dad a hug. Go on, Goten, and if he gets heavy-handed at all, they'll have to reserve him two halos because he'll have died twice. Goku then bent down, took his son in the air, and brought him in with a loving embrace, entrusting him about the care of his mother and the earth as the world's champion was once again forced to take his leave. Bye, everyone. See y'all again sometime, and probably sooner than you think. And with those final words, son Goku vanished. Krillin looked up with tears in his eyes in a mixture of grief and panic. So are we gonna talk about what he just said before he left her? But there was no time. The fusion training needed to commence again with the utmost haste as the Earth was now on a very short clock. Y'all, I never appreciated in the past how tense this part of the story feels, but I definitely do now. When you think about the scenario, it's actually pretty wild. Goku, historically the Earth's safety net is now gone and potentially for good. Not only that, but the second string is now out of commission as well, with Vegeta well past due on pack watch and Gohan being MIA but for all intents and purposes toast as well. The Earth is now on its third string reserves having to depend on untested Generation Alpha ragamuffins to put an end to the greatest threat the planet has ever seen. The situation is pretty damn dire in actuality and it's cool seeing the risk Toriyama took to take things in a unique direction. And speaking of unique directions, Goku upon entering Yemma's lobby decided that he had his own plans and needed to chop it up with the big man himself for the moment. Yo Yemma, looks busy in here. Oh, if it isn't Goku, I got half a mind to send you to HFIL right now myself. Do you know how much crap I've been putting up with since you died and there's no one available to babysit Earth? This line looks like opening day at Cedar Point. I don't even have enough room for this nonsense. My bad, Yemma, but speaking of that, have you seen my boy around by any chance? Son Gohan, about this tall, stole Yamcha's haircut? Oh, believe me, Goku, I'd know your seed if I saw it walking around this place, and I assure you, he's not here. But do you know who did come through? Deborah, the damn king of the demon world. Damn near had to break him in half myself to get him to settle down. Eventually saw reason, but I figured he enjoyed himself just a little too much in hell, so I sent him to heaven instead. Kill him with kindness, they say. Oh, yeah, man, you're the best. So my son's not dead? That's great news. Now I just got to figure out where he went. It's so weird, though. Krillin was right. I can't seem to sense his key. Taking a brief moment of concentration, it was faint, but he could sense it. That was definitely his son's energy signature. But just where was he and how did he get so far away? Only one way to find out. So Goku took his fingers to his temple and arrived directly to the location of his son, just in time to give himself the closest shave of a lifetime to top it off. Yo, Pops, is that you? Gohan was stunned, but Kai and Kabito even more so. 
Not every day you see a human vanish out of thin air into the realm of the gods. Even funnier was Goku's reaction. Yo, Kai and Clifford, you guys are here? I could've swore both of you guys got smoked back on Earth considering the mediocre power levels and everything. No offense. Goku then spent the next few minutes getting his boy up to speed on the happenings and how the Earth was currently taking back shots with no protection from the likes of Majin Buu. As Gohan processed, Goku saw the blade he was lugging around and asked if he could borrow it. Surprised by the weight at first, it only took Goku a few seconds to acclimate to it before he started swinging the thing around like a Louisville slugger at the cages, leaving Kaioshin astonished and Kabito wanting to retire to a remote planet and never see another living soul again. By his account, at this point the Kais in the land they resided on was cooked. Goku, ever the bum, ended his introduction by requesting a place to stay and a free meal. Lesson right here, folks, you can take the deadbeat out the trenches, but you can't take the trenches out the deadbeat. Back at home, while Goku was gearing up for a meal, Piccolo was getting the boys geared up for war, breaking them out of their slumber with all the subtlety of a commanding officer in basic before suiting them up for combat. We learned that in the short while that the Earth's last line had been resting, Majin Buu had taken out two-thirds of the Earth's population and had decided that he was after a clean sweep. As the pink party crasher scoured the earth looking for the remaining one third of humanity he hadn't clapped yet, he made a pit stop when he saw a young boy struggling along the road. Wanting to be as thorough as possible, he went below and prepared to knock little Timmy into an alternate dimension, but hesitated when he didn't hear the screams of terror he had grown accustomed to. Hey, this the part where you supposed to yell. Yell? Why, are you famous or something, mister? Yeah, famous for running fades. You a dummy or something, kid? Why aren't you scared of boo like everybody else? Uh, first of all, rude, but second of all, I'm blind, mister. I couldn't see you no matter how hard I tried. And this right here is the moment that Majin Buu proved to me he's on a different level of savagery. This Majin Buu went full heel messiah mode, curing this little dude's blindness only so he could hear him scream in terror as he knocked his block off. Do y'all actually realize how insane that is? That's a whole different breed of pettiness right there. I really need Majin Buu to relax. Right as Buu cocked that yellow dishwashing glove back and prepared to do what he do, he was surprised by a child who not only didn't run after seeing him, but gave him a hug and even called him a hero. Wait, so you think Majin Buu cool? I mean, I guess, mister. I don't really know anything about being cool, but you care my blindness. You couldn't possibly be that bad. Bro, this next section is so cursed. I low-key don't even know what to think about it. So the kid, in an effort to give Buu anything he possibly could for the miraculous procedure he just performed, gave Buu money to get some milk like, here, big fella, this one's on the house. This Buu guy tries to eat the coin, decides to taste like hot garbo, and flies off into town to show the kid some real cuisine. He hits up a general store, and as a viewer, you're like, huh, wonder what this guy rolled up here for of all places. Don't worry, Buu plans to answer that inquiry in short order. Rather than giving the milkman the zenny he just earned from his good deed, he uses his dairy-based XG to turn the dude into a carton of milk. But oh no, it ain't over, cause he then takes the human turned creamer carton of dairy back to the kid, tells him that money's trash, try milk instead, and inadvertently turns this poor, previously blind child into a cannibal. Like that does make him a cannibal, right? Like I don't care how milky this man appears to be now, no diddy, that was still a whole ass grown man about 45 seconds ago that this kid just drank. I drink people! diabolical word. Then to top it off, after committing this Geneva Convention breaking atrocity, man's like Boo flies away, by happenstance sees a peaceful town left untouched by his carnage and just nukes it, letting out a hearty belly laugh while he flies off to commit his next Dexter level antics. Bro, somebody gotta stop this man. Boo cannot be left to his own devices. While Boo was locked in on Havoc, Gohan was locked in on training, continuously practicing his Z-Sword Katas in the land of the Kais, eventually catching the notice of his dad, who pointed out just how much his son had managed to improve his swordsmanship in just a single day of focused practice. Seeing the level of improvement, Goku decided that it was time to deliver his son a challenge to see what the legendary blade was really made of. Lifting up a few ton boulder that he intended to rocket at his son who excitedly took on the challenge with a smile. Kai watched the display, but found himself dissatisfied and intervened. Now Gohan. Seeing you cut through a mere boulder with a legendary Z-Sword is far below its esteemed capabilities. Let me see if I can whip you up a more appropriate challenge. In the next moment, a massive black cube appearing as though it hailed from an entirely different dimension found its way floating above Kai's head directly into Goku's sweaty palms. This right here is Kachin, known to be the hardest metal in the universe. I think that should prove to be a more suitable challenge for a tool as mighty as our Z-Sword and its new wielder. Goku was like, say less, bracing himself with the metal in both hands, setting his feet before launching the block directly at his son's dome like he was looking to put him on King Yama's roster for real. Gohan assessed the situation, matched the speed of the obstacle coming straight at him with blinding speed, and in an instant made contact with the block and awaited to see his blade cut through it like Gordon Ramsay threw a chicken cutlet. 
the blade tensed, but instantly he felt something was wrong and the next moment the legendary Z sword, the blade wielded by only the strongest of the strong in the land of the god of gods, had split in two. Kai and Kabito were inconsolable. Their gambit was now finished. The Z-Sword, the tool that was supposed to be the only thing capable of bringing justice to Majin Buu, the greatest of evils, had been broken in half by two mortals playing softball in a father-son bonding effort. Huh, guess you guys should have picked something a little softer, huh? And here, with Goku's naive but accurate commentary, is where we'll call it. Homies, I remember seeing this scene in the past and being just as surprised as Kibbles and Bits. Are you truly telling me the ultimate MacGuffin, the weapon of supreme victory we've been anticipating to turn the ties for now episodes on end, got literally shattered off a father-son t-ball excursion? Toriyama's ability to play with the people's emotion knows no bounds, man. Rest in power to the GOAT. Tune in next time as the boys back on Earth work on perfecting fusion and the crew in the land of the Kai's attempt to take in the reality of the Z-Source destruction. With Kyle Sheen's ultimate weapon now out of play, is there any hope for Boo's destruction? Or is the final third of Earth's population doomed to the same fate as those that came before? Only one way to find out. Be easy y'all, and catch you again in the next video.